What's up guys? So today I'm gonna bring you um, some stuff that I haven't done before um, and, I'm, and there will be a part two. Um, this is just the very beginning. I'm gonna skim the surface to give you guys a little bit what's going on and it is on CERN and the Angel of the Bottomless Pit. So it's a little bit longer sermon so just kind of stay with me. Now right now I'm gonna give you guys a, uh, a kind of a surface of what's been going on there, the science, a little bit of uh, the uh, paranormal stuff that's been going on there um, and what they've been involved with um, and, and are doing. Um, but I got a um, I got a new book on CERN um, I'm about to read. So and I'm gonna when I read that thing, I'm going to go way deeper into the, the uh, spiritual phenomenon and what they're doing and could bring out of CERN as far as the Angel of Bottomless Pit goes. And uh, all the stuff that they're planning and will do. I mean, they've had satanic rituals when they open. They've done dances. They've done all kinds of... Because they, that's their ultimate goal. They want to bring about what's the dark matter. They want to bring about um, what I believe that is in the Bible, the angel of the bottomless pit. So this, that's their agenda. They've had all kinds of satanic things, rituals going on over there when they opened it. And actually now, recently, a couple of days ago, they just reopened it. It was shut down for three years for maintenance. Um, and now they have reopened it and are about to seek even more knowledge uh, and things that they did not they did not know about before. So guys, it's getting crazy. So let's go ahead and dig into this sermon. So I'm calling this, and again, I always tell you guys, I'm looking over here because I got my, my second monitor over there where it's got all my notes. So I'm calling this CERN and the Angel of the Bottomless Pit Part 1. So let's get started. So I first want to read this verse from Hebrews 11.3. Which says, uh, this is all King James, by the way, my verses. But it says in Hebrews eleven three, through faith we understand that the wor worlds were framed, the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So just keep that in mind. All right, so this is a little, I'm going to read from Le Revelation nine one through eleven as we start to cover certain right. So Revelation 9, 1 through 11 is talking about the angel of the bottomless pit and the, uh, the sound of uh, the fifth trumpet. Um, oh, here we go. An Revelation 9, 1 through 11. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven fall from heaven unto the earth. Now stop right there real quick. Sometimes when the Bible means star, it actually means an angel. Sometimes it's, when the Bible says star, it's actually a star. And sometimes when the Bible says star, it has to deal with an angel. So that's why he said, I, I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke, smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Neither any, um, any, neither, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. So, that's, so the devil has his mark, God has his mark. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Father God Jehovah and the whole and we're filled by the Holy Spirit of Father Joe and Lord Jesus. So devil if you notice devil always tries to replicate, so he always tries to steal or deceive or or change what God has done. But he, so just a little nugget right there. Um which have not the seal of God in their forts. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion, which he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall surely des and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were at the faces of men, and they had hair as long uh, hair as hair of women. Um, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, um, of many horses running into battle. And they had tails like the scorpions, and there were strings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And here we go. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name 
in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Polyon. Wish I had my phone over here. Um, so one of the names, um, is actually they're related both, but in Abaddon, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew tongue he's called Abaddon, but in the Greek it's called Polyon. They both mean destroyer and destruction. Is that crazy or what? So we know the devil is a destroyer, but the the king of the bomb of split, the angel of the bomb of split, what they're doing, I'll cover in a minute with Shiva, which rep which replicates or represents um, destruction or destroyer, is actually what Revelation nine says. As the Hebrew tongue, his name is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Polyon, and those Hebrew and Greek terms mean death and de destroyer and destruction. Isn't that crazy? So their idol god that I'm about to mention means destroyer or destruction. And it's called Shiva, the Hindu god. Idol pagan god, I will say. Um, now I'm going to tell you something right now that have some that some have known that some have no idea what's going on right now in Switzerland. They have no idea. But it's known by the name of CERN. It is what is called a large hydrogen collider. This large hydrogen collider is an accelerator, and it accelerates particles and brings them to the point of collision. You say to yourself, what does it have to do with the Bible? It has a lot to do with the Bible. World-renowned scientist Stephen Hawking said, and by the way, he is a well-known atheist. These are the words of Stephen Hawking when he warned, and we'll cover more of Stephen Hawking's quotes as we go along in the sermon. It gets crazy. These are the words of Stephen Hawking when he warned Switzerland about CERN. The God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. And this is coming from a scientist, from a scientist physicist, scientific physicist, and a well-known atheist. Do they know that they know what they are doing. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, which he is also the the um, the host of the I believe the host of the uh, show Cosmos. Um, but uh, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson also talked about a potential explosion of the universe caused by CERN. Both of these scientists experts do not agree with what is happening in CERN, Switzerland, right now. There is a 17 mile long accelerator that lies 300 feet below the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. Part of it is located in France and part of it is located in Switzerland. It's a joint European project. Um, the United States is there as an observer right now, or was, but the brain power behind this originates in Europe. They are attempting to recreate what they believe happened that brought all this into existence as being the Big Bang Theory, which we all know is false. Now we know that in the beginning, the book of Genesis, that God created the heaven and the earth. God spoke it into existence, right? They are finding things. They are discovering things they did not expect to discover as they start to do this hydrogen collider. As they get deeper and deeper into this experimentation, through research and so forth, they are beginning to find out that there is a whole lot more to the creation than they ever thought of before. They are beginning to find out that there is something going on here that is completely blowing the human mind, or that can blow the human mind. This 17 mile long underground tube that is located in Switzerland has four or five different points where they collide. With some, say, I'm sorry, back is real quick. Sorry if you hear a lawnmower outside, somebody's mowing the grass. I think it's my dad's mowing the grass. Um, somebody's mowing the grass around here. Anyway, so if you, if you hear that, um, that's what it is. So, just sorry about that. Um, so, the 17 mile long underground tube that's located in Switzerland has four or five different points where they collide. With some, say, protons and something else, but particles that are being moved above the speed of light inside this collider. The longer the collider, the more speed they can obtain. And the more they are able to get deeper into what they are looking for. They are looking for the very building blocks... Of what brought all of this together. They are going through, going through this to go back to the point where they can separate and find out what it, was like, what it was like then. And by doing this, they can build on the knowledge that they can obtain. Now let me give you a little bit of what is happening, or what has been happening. Where they have done this experimentation. Strange things are happening. Right? Strange things. Um... Unexpected by scientists, paranormal, paranormal phenomenon, they like to call it, the scientists call it. Apparitions, all kinds of demonic spirits are beginning to, beginning to manifest themselves, themselves in ways as they're doing this 
hydrogen collider and they're colliding this. Here we have in Switzerland a huge wheel. Here we go. And inside that wheel is a Hindu pagan idol god and its name is Shiva. And we just I just talked about that and what that and what the Shiva means. He does a dance of destruction inside that wheel. And he is one of the pagan triad gods, one of the greatest gods of Hinduism. You have Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. Brahma is the god of creation. And this is all Hindu, by the way. I, I don't pagan gods. But well, this is in Hindu belief. This is the three main grace gods. They triad gods. They have the idol gods. It says, um, or I say, um, Brahma is the god of creation. Vishnu is the god of preservation. But Shiva is the god of destruction. And by the way, also, a while back in the United States, um, I believe it was in New York, um, they lit up on in New York the picture of Shiva in New York. It might have been on the the One World Trade Center or the Empire State Building. I can't remember. But they lit up a huge picture, like neon picture of Shiva in New York. Don't know why they did it. That's just something to think about. Weird, right? But, as, anyways, okay, I'm not going to get that. Um, the way the Hindus see it is that when Shiva destroys, it's not for the purpose of annihilation. He destroys so that Brahma can come and recreate. Which is the creator again, Brahma. So now, when, so now, when the Hindus sent their scientists to CERN, they put this out there in front the Shiva, the Shiva wheel with Shiva inside the wheel. They put it out in front of CERN. And so, what these people are doing with the collider is destroying what comes together, but for the purpose of recreating and find out what brought it into existence to begin to begin with. These scientists are some. Of, these scientists are some of the smartest brains in all of the world. But we were told that when Darwin's theory came out, evolution, we were told about when Darwin's theory came out that it would completely destroy the foundations of the Bible, of Christianity. And the Bible would become irrelevant and the people bought into it. The people that believed in Darwin's theory of evolution bought into that. That the Bible would, and the Christianity would be destroyed because Darwin's theory is right about evolution, how we came from this, this, and that. No. We are made in the image of God Almighty, Father God Jehovah, and we were made in His likeness. God is the creator of us. God is the creator of the heaven and the earth and the world and all of creation. And I um, just wanted to say that a little bit. And because we all know that. But just to reinforce it. Um, and the people bought into it. Because after all, Dar- Darwin is scientific. After all, he's all scientific, right? So he knows, right? Darwin knows the answers. No, he doesn't. It's false. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world they are becoming very religious. Because here they have got Shiva. They have, they have dances. I mentioned that at the beginning. They have dances to Shiva. And you can go look it up on YouTube. And they are, and also the satanic rituals they did when it opened. You can go look that up on YouTube as well. It's, it is insane. It's crazy. And they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they are finding things. Here is an example. In one of their collisions when they collected these particles together. Collided these particles together. They saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see it. They didn't fit in any of their model. But they could not deny the reality of it. Of the apparitions they were seeing. Something was going on in there. That they could not explain. And it was scary for them. Or for them. Because if it, if it doesn't fit in the scientist's paper. Or in his books. They just throw it out the window. Right? They, want, they don't want to accept anything that's out of their, their theory. They just throw it out the window. Nope. Nope. We're not going to believe this. They have, have a hard time accepting that there is a spirit world out there. The spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute God that is from everlasting to everlasting, a powerful, almighty God. And his name is Father God Jehovah. Abba Jehovah. He is Jehovah, the I am, the I am, the everlasting God, the everlasting Father. He is the creator of the universe. And the sender and Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Or in the Hebrew, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua HaMashiach. But scientists like that will never admit it. Because that takes it out of their scientist's control and out of their scientist's power, right? We just talked about that they're, if they don't accept it, they throw it out the window. The scientists had to demonstrate his theory and put it into motion. Stephen Hawking, a theoretical physicist, has warned these people, you are about to open a Pandora, you're about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot put back in what came out of that box. So Stephen, even Stephen Hawking's warning these guys, right? And Stephen Hawking's a well-known atheist, and he's warning these guys of what they're doing. 
or what they're trying to do. Uh, they want to know what the matter was like before it came into its present form. They must determine what holds it together. Now, if you know your Bible, you know what is holding it together, right? We know what's holding it together. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.3 that God upholds things by the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. So we know what holds it together, and that's Father God Jehovah. CERN allows them to examine particles in their initial state. So what has come from CERN? What has come out of this? All right. They have a list of their accomplishments, achievements, and all that. One thing for certain, and it's called antimatter. Let me tell you some of the characteristics of antimatter. There are those that believe that for everything in the universe that is matter, there is a corresponding antimatter. That there is a connection between the two. It is something phys physical or sim sorry. It is something physical or something real. If you act upon that matter, it can burn wood. For example, you have acted upon it, but you have to act upon it. But you have acted upon it. You have had to do something to cause the wood to burn. So you have to act upon it for it to burn. If you don't, it won't. Antimatter, on the other hand, and that's matter. But antimatter, on the other hand, is a very unstable thing. That does not need to be acted upon. It doesn't need to be acted upon. Antimatter. Unless you do something to contain it. Unless you do something to contain it. It is going to burn. It is very, very uncertain to what all it is capable of doing. Antimatter is a product of this experimentation. In CERN, Switzerland, antimatter is coming from it. Antimatter is so powerful that one man says that one grain, one grain of antimatter is the equivalent of four atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima. Think about that. One grain of antimatter is equals four atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima. Is that not crazy? That, that's how dangerous this stuff is. They say it takes a very long time to produce a single pound of antimatter. But now, because of their technology, what they're doing at CERN Switzerland, they can... That they can produce this stuff much quicker. Talking about antimatter. They, you know, they said it takes a long time. But with their new science and technology. They can produce it much quicker now. Um, and they're beginning to produce antimatter. When they produce antimatter. Strange things happen. They put it in a college to contain it. Right? They put this in a college, a college um, for, for a little bit. Uh, when they did strange things. Started happening at the college. People started hallucinating. People started going wild. All kinds of crazy stuff was happening. Apparitions. In plain world words, I'm sorry, I keep messing up. In plain words, there is a connection between this stuff and the spirit world. God Almighty is going to let them go so far, but God is not going to let them go any further. Any further at a certain point, past a certain point. But to fit into the great deception that is coming, and it's coming, and I'm going to cover that a lot in part two, but we're just going to scrape the service here in this sermon. But to fit into the great deception that is coming like this world has never seen before. Never. They can sure draw these men in to make them think that because they have reached this certain point in their scientific analysis, that they are bringing in these spirit beings that will make true believers out of them. But it will do more than make true believers out of them. NASA said they will come in contact with aliens. Now, we're talking about scientists. We're talking about the Darwin crowd, right? We're talking about the Darwin crowd who are not, they didn't believe in this spirit world, this these beings that, you know, they believed in dark antimatter and they wanted to discover the, the essence and the, the particles of the universe and what made things happen, how it came into existence. They want to do all that, but they weren't religious people. They didn't believe in a spirit world because, like I said, they were Darwin's crowd. They were talking about the crowd that threw the Bible out. We're talking about the crowd that just threw the Bible out because they believed in Darwin's evolution. And said it doesn't belong today. They were too smart for the Bible. We're scientists, they were talking about, they said. Yet this crowd is saying that in just a few years, they're going to know that they know that they are going to come in contact with alien beings. And what you think is an alien being... What you think is an alien be alien being is actual an evil spirit. That's what that is. Aliens are names. They are evil spirits. There are no aliens out there, brothers and sisters. There's none. Forget all that stuff. All these UFOs, spacecrafts, flying saucers, all this stuff, that's all demonic. It's real, but it's demonic. So I see a great deception coming there that in their analysis and laboratories that they believe in, stuff begins to show up that they can't explain. And this spirit being that is coming down to this world, 
that they will accept with open arms. These people will accept with open arms because they are willing to put Shiva out there in front of the in front of CERN, destruction destroyer. That is the Hindu god, but it also means in the Bible at Abaddon and Apollyon. We've covered that. I covered that in front. Here are these wise, smart, brilliant men that are willing to believe that there, that there is something more that can be measured. Just unless there's something more that can be measured that can't be measured with a microscope, right? There is something going on, and you better believe there is. There is stuff going on in CERN that is that would blow your mind. How what spiritual stuff is going on in CERN, and, and apparitions, and demonic spirits, and things they're they're bringing out of this this hydrogen collider. Now, Stephen Hawking, again, the atheist, the believes that what they are liable to do here in CERN, Switzerland, is unleash the gates of hell on this earth. He is an atheist. And he is saying they are liable to open, to unleash the gates of hell over here, over there in CERN, Switzerland. That should tell you something. He's a well-renowned, known atheist um, and one of the greatest scientists in the world. Um, but now he's saying they're going to open the gate of hell if they do this. Or unleash the gates of hell. The reason I took you to Revelation 9 is because in Revelation 9 is the gate of hell, right? Because the angel of the bottomless pit comes up out of the earth and it's the gate of hell. Um, Revelation 4, although, is the door of heaven, right? When the catching up of the saints, when we get caught up to the saint, we, I'm sorry, how do I explain this? When we as saints get caught up to the Lord with the Lord Jesus in the clouds, we are going through the door into heaven. But he will open. But God will open the gate of hell on this earth, and according to Revelation nine, these beings are coming up out of the earth. If you remember, when Saul went to the witch of Endor, she said, "I saw gods ascending out of the earth. They were coming up." And as it says in in First Samuel twenty eight twelve through thirteen, this is King James. And when the woman saw Samuel, let's talk about the witch. When the witch saw Samuel, and when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, Saul. Be not afraid. For what sawest thou, or what did you see? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. She saw demonic spirits. What did she see? She saw demonic spirits. So what would be greater what would be greater ruse, which ruse means to deceive someone? Um than to use their science and their technology to suck them in, to accepting some spirit being coming from somewhere up here, some alien, down to this earth and do it through a collider in CERN, Switzerland. And this is some of the highest technology, I suppose, on earth, right? And do it, th- and do it through that and bring it down on this earth and bring it into people. Here's another thing. The antimatter is also called dark matter. Um, and dark matter has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people, right? Okay, it does. And remember, when you produce antimatter, you have to contain it. As we covered it, we covered it before, it also go wild. Um, you have to contain it. Because if you don't contain it, this is the biggest problem. Because if you do, do, if you do not contain it, I'm speaking too fast here, it just goes wild. If you don't contain the dark matter, it goes wild, right? And they don't know what is liable to do. They don't know what this thing or what this dark matter is liable to do if they can't contain it. Because, again, it goes wild if you do not contain it. So they don't know what it's likely to do or what it's liable to do if they don't. What they do know that, but they do know this from what they have experienced so far. It has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. Screaming mad. It controls people. It is an enormously powerful thing. It is pulling something out of hell that you don't want anything to do with. And turning it loose on mankind. Right. Can you imagine something that had made that has made apparitions appear? Right? This stuff. That you have some scientists warning, don't do this. There are some of these scientists saying, Don't do this. This is dangerous, right? Stephen Hawking, we looked at his what he has said. Neil deGrasse Tyson, what he has said. Um, you don't know what you're going to unleash, some of these scientists are saying. Maybe there is a greater picture in all this and he is called the devil maybe he intends to cause chaos on the earth which we all know he does the devil does intend to call chaos, cause chaos on the earth and we'll see that more and more in the end times in the last days we're in right now before the coming of our lord jesus so how how close could we be to the coming of our lord jesus christ how close 
a lot of the church is asleep, guys. A lot of the church is asleep. And they be woke up, waking up. But the Lord Jesus is coming back very soon, so be ready. Romans 13, 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The Bible says, also says that when these things begin to happen, to lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh, or draws near. Again, the words of Stephen Hawking, he said, this is, this is the last quote from Stephen Hawking. This is crazy. He said, I'm an atheist, but the Hydrogen Collider could open a gateway to hell. An atheist. One of the world's most renowned physicists and theoretical scientists. He is saying this. And he doesn't even believe it. He is saying they will open a gateway to hell if they do this with the Large Hydrogen Collider, which is in CERN. There's a great deception coming, guys. And I hope you're ready to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. Um, my biggest worry with all this going on, um, my biggest worry with all this going on, um, is not them blowing up the world, right? Here's what I worry about and concern about coming out of that place and CERN, um, is all this spirit deception using it to deceive people, right? They connect spirituality and science together. Imagine what kind of union that would have, right? Science and spirituality, not Christ, but science and spirit spirituality, Man, they got what they wanted if that happens or when that happens. Even so, come Lord Jesus. What I've given you, what I've given you today is just skimming the surface of what's going on in CERN. Um, like I said, this is just kind of intro. Um, and I, kinda, I hope I didn't read it too fast, guys, because I felt I messed up, kind of mumbled my words a little bit, reading it, trying to get all, all the information out and look at the camera and speak to you guys all at the same time. So forgive me for messing up and rumbling or mumbling and stuff. Um, but I've only scratched the surface here to what's going on in CERN. Part two is going to be deeper into the great, de the actual great deception and the gateway to hell and the, the sending of the angel of Obama's pit and what in the, the sending uh, demonic spirits and all the stuff that's coming and will come out of this, this experimentation and um, this scientific experimentation in CERN, Switzerland. Um, so that's all I've got for you today, guys. Um, get ready for the next one. Um, I'm working right now. I'm reading a new book on CERN and, uh, it's going to be crazy, but I hope you learned something. I know a lot, most of this today was scientific information. Um, and some of it was, and actually, you know what guys, I did want to bring, read, I'm just going to bring it out of my Bible. I did want to read the verse or the passage about the great deception that talks about in second Thessalonians and how it's going to, well, we'll read it right here. So second Thessalonians two, 9 through 12 says, even him whose coming is after work whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They didn't receive the truth of Christ. They, they, they bought into the great deception. And for this, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might believe, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So my my takeaway from this, and reading the scripture, and, and doing research to CERN, and the meaning, and, and everything they're doing with Shiva, and the meanings behind the angel of the bottomless pit, destruction, destroyer, how it matches with Shiva, all this stuff that I'm really going to get to in part two. But I believe the great deception is going to be. Them saying they are coming in with, they are coming into with alien contact. We're contacting aliens, and what these aliens are again? There's no aliens out there, brothers and sisters, but there are demonic spirits in the spirit world, and we have spirit world and spiritual battle every day. And Michael and Gabriel and all the angels of God are battling every day, um, and we know the who has the victory. That's our Lord Jesus Christ and Father God Jehovah. The everlasting, the everlasting, almighty, eternal God. Hallelujah, the great I am. Um, but guys, there's spiritual warfare, and we are to put on the form of our God that's mentioned in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Um, and always be ready. Um, but I believe the great deception is going to be is going to be them saying, we've come in contact with aliens, and you know they're here to help us. And not, but what they are are the fallen angels in, in demonic spirits, right? That's going to be, in my point of view, the great deception. And it's coming in, into motion 
and into the picture through this CERN of what they're doing, the scientific exper- experimentation in CERN. They are working on bringing this into the picture, the Great Deception. But again, part two, I will go into all that very deep. This part was just to cover kind of the scientific information, a little bit what's going on in CERN right now because of that, of what they're doing. Spiritual stuff is going on, demonic stuff is going on. The, uh, the meanings of the Hindu idol gods, Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma, that they're involved with over there and what that brings about. And then a few scriptures um, and what some atheists, scientific atheists have said. They're warning these people, do not do what you are doing because you're going to open the gates of hell. So anyways, love you guys. Until next time, may the Lord Jesus keep you in all grace, peace, and truth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Shalom. See you guys.